Look at my vertical, baby. Whoa! Two! Three! Pump those quads! Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bushka. Now, I've done a lot of videos on sniping. Uh, some of these clips you've seen before, and they are videos that go into real detail on the kind of rules that I have for myself while I'm sniping. But this is a video that's a little bit different. This is something that I don't think enough people pick up on. And certainly, I think it's it's about the way we acquire targets with sniping. Uh, everyone can hit shots every once in a while that are pretty spectacular. And everyone can hit a shot on a target once they're zoomed in and they know where that target is. But so often, we lose sniper fights, or at least a lot of people seem to lose sniper fights because they don't acquire targets correctly and they don't scan for targets correctly. And what I'm going to do today is break down for you in uh, a little bit of detail how I spot targets generally before they spot me and how I then turn that into a massive advantage. Uh, a lot of it is equipment selection. Now, you've got to remember when you're sniping, um, there, I mean, there's things I've covered off before like constant movement. Look at between these shots what I'm doing. I'm absolutely not sitting still. But did you notice something else? between those shots. Before I engaged each target in those two clips, I was looking through my AR. I had a two times and a four times scope. Now, neither of those are the scope that I would recommend for having on your AR. I recommend and use nearly exclusively a three times scope on my main AR when it's available. And there's a big reason for that. Um, and I will break that down right now. Uh, but I just want to highlight too, you can see I use both guns. The AR is going to be your spotter. In real life, you'd be a sniper. You'd have a spotter with you. Uh, that guy would tell you ranges, wind direction, uh, look at targets for you. For me, you are your own spotter. And your spotter is going to be your three times scoped weapon. And I'll show you why. This is, I know where those guys are. I've got an eight times scope. Look how long it takes me to reacquire them when I zoom in with that eight times scope after changing positions. I'm gonna slow that down for you again. I know that they're out there. Look how long it takes to acquire that target again and begin the whole process of smacking them. It takes forever, absolutely forever. And I'll show you why. This is. This is why I use a three times scope. Look at the motorbike there, the this motorbike with sidecar. I can scan that entire massive mountain. It's like 220, 250 meters away. But if I've got an eight times scope and I'm moving it around there, do you see how hard it is to pinpoint that tiny little motorbike on that mountain? And as soon as, and the scope takes up so much more real estate than a three times scope. And what I find, even with a four times scope, it is way too much real estate. And if you're like most people that I've watched YouTube videos of and such, they scan for targets with this scope, with the eight times or the six times or the four times. And that's a mistake. And that gives you a competitive advantage if you're actually scanning and spotting your own targets with your spotter weapon, which is what you use your AR or SMG for. One of the rules with sniping is movement will draw the eye. Now look at the size of the eight times scope on the screen. It takes up a huge section of the screen and it actually is seeing a much smaller section of the map than you see with a three times scope. If you can see that, look at the difference in this. That's a three times. Look how much space that takes up. When we switch to the eight times, look how magnified that is. It's, it's a, such a small part of the screen. And that's what you wanna be doing. You wanna be spotting with this scope. Looking, looking, looking. Ah, there's my target. And then I zoom in with the eight, and that's the kill scope. We have a spotter scope, we have a kill scope. Uh, doesn't really matter what gun you're using, but the three times is perfect because you can control recoil if you are practiced at PUBG Mobile with a three times scope or even a two times scope if you absolutely have to. Um, I can do it with a four times scope, but the reason I don't run a four times scope generally on an AR outside of somewhere like Sanok is quite simply because 
there's no great advantage with that extra level of magnification running it on an, an ar three versus a four but you lose a lot of screen space uh, with the edges of the scope. The three times doesn't take up nearly as much space on the screen as the other scopes. And the joy of that is it gives you a much wider field of view. You can see more real estate looking through a three times than you can looking through a four times. Now, as I mentioned before, when you're scanning around, you, you almost want to just let your eyes drift outside of the scope itself because this isn't your kill weapon. This is the weapon that you're using to find look, I actually see these guys on the right without having the scope directly on them. Then I switch over to my AWM and then we start doing the business. Movement will draw the eye naturally. So if you have a three times out, you will see movement on the edges of the scope a lot more clearly than you will if you have an eight or a six or even a four times out. And that means that you can get to grips with them a whole lot faster. Now, everyone's going to have their own particular and peculiar weapon selections. But if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, specifically since the release of Sanok, you'd know that this is a near mantra for me. This is a near must have in the kit bag. I will run a three times and then as high a magnification as I possibly can on my sniper rifle. The only exclusion to that rule for me is when I'm running Sanok. Sanok is a funny one because the view lines are so obfuscated and there's so many little permutations in the landscape that it's very, very tough to actually get value out of a six times or an eight times scope. Unless you've got a gun like an AWM, you really, I mean, you can see here, this is a chicken dinner I got recently where I'm running a barrel with iron sights and a four times on a QBZ, that's two ARs, because I just don't get the value out of a bolt action sniper rifle. So you won't want to adjust as is needed. And you can see we can absolutely spam with a four times and, and just spray and pray as long as we've got the right equipment. But again, three times scope. Then switch over to your single shot. In this case, it's a Mark 14. The aim of sniping, let's be honest, is to give yourself opportunities to take shots where you don't take fire back. There's a guy, I hear a car turn up at that compound. So I'm going to drive a couple of hundred meters past it in a straight line, then swing around, stop, and run back in from well beyond the line of sight. And remember, we talk about movement drawing the eye. It's always about scanning with movement. But because I know that this guy is going to be in that compound, I don't use my spotting rifle. I use my kill weapon, which is obviously the four times scope on the Car 98. And we're just waiting there for that bloke. There we go. There's a headshot. There's very little inherent risk in a move like that. And that is why we want to snipe. Sniping is a beautiful thing and it can be tremendously helpful, especially towards late games. Spot with the three times, hit with the eight times. And I mean, that guy is, is just so lucky. Um, he's engaged two people, but I nail him a bunch of times and still don't get the kill on this bloke. We ended up taking him out for the, uh, for the chicken dinner. He just got behind that structure there. This is what it's all about. The right selection of equipment is just as important as having, you know, the skills to hit the shot. If you know someone is there, you don't have to worry about this. I'm, I'm absolutely on board with that. But, you know, until you do, don't be walking around with that car 98 in your hand. For number one, if you get jumped with a car 98 in your hand, you're going to be screwed. Again, this is Sanok. And look at the loadout. Uh, AKM. And a four times on a QBZ. AKM with iron sights. Because I love the iron sights on the barrel. And the AKM. I just do. It's, it's where it's at. You've got to figure out what works for you. Why it works. And how you can get it to work. But if you take away only one thing from this video. It's that you need to have a very, very strong idea. On what you feel comfortable spotting targets with not necessarily what you feel comfortable killing targets with. And for me, that's why guns that are versatile 
and can handle a three times scope. Uh, often the guns that you'll see running towards the end of the game, even to the point where, I mean, this is this is a, a really big finish for me. And the Car 98 with the eight times scope is doing great things to bad people. I mean, this is why you run a sniper rifle. You want to be able to hit shots like this that are absolutely clutch and give you the opportunity to go for those crazy wins. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got some value out of it. I know that I try to make sure that the videos I make actually have a purpose. They're not just clickbait videos. They're the kind of videos that can give you a hand to win games uh, and get more enjoyment out of your PUBG Mobile experience. It would help me tremendously if you humans shared these videos. It can be frustrating to see crazy titles like World Record Kills, and it's just a third-person game with 20 kills in Bronze 5, and it's got a million hits. Like, I still would like to get some views. <laughs> Until next time, look after yourselves and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.